Holly Erickson, and I um, am the principal investigator for the project known as the Program for Climate Smart Livestock, um, which is funded by BMZ in partnership with GIZ and the World Bank. Um, we um, are working in three countries, Kenya, Uganda, and Ethiopia. Um, so we have sort of three different objectives. The first objective um, is really focused on identifying, piloting, and validating what we're calling climate smart livestock practices. And so that's our attempt to take the approach known as climate smart agriculture and zero in specifically on practices that work for livestock. Traditionally, we've really focused on low emissions development in the livestock sector because that was there's been so much emphasis on uh, livestock's contribution to greenhouse gas emissions. But what we're really excited about in this new project is that we get to focus on the other two pillars of climate smart agriculture, um, specifically adaptation to climate change. Because just as for every other agricultural sector, livestock development will be um, uh, very significantly affected by, by climate change. And livestock are themselves a very important asset that we already know many farmers um, look to to protect themselves against um, climate sh climate related shocks um, and, and others. So that's the first objective is really to disseminate um, uh, climate smart livestock practices um, for farmers but primarily using extension um, workers, NGOs, um, line ministry staff as our vehicle um, to, to, to reach those farmers. So very much a training of, a training of trainers approach. The second component is focused um, at the national policy making level um, although we want to link that national level to the local level um, where we're testing the, 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 the interventions um, under the first component. And so um, our target there is to influence uh, climate, climate finance, climate investments um, in each of the three countries because they have all um, included um, it, it either agriculture or indicated that they'd like to use livestock um, to reach some of their NDC targets. But we know that they need support um, developing um, uh, strong climate investment plans. The, the second area is really looking at how to achieve the greater policy coherence. And then the third are um, uh, testing um, and using some decision support tools to help policymakers think about how to make decisions now to protect um, their populations and uh, livestock sector against future climate change. And then the third component um, is a bit more specific, but it's actually quite critical to countries' abilities to prove that they're actually meeting um, the targets that they've committed to, uh, to the UNFCCC. So on the mitigation side, we're, we're developing protocols for what's called measuring, reporting, and verification, or MRV. Um, and on the adaptation side, we're going to develop a couple of protocols for adaptation tracking. But in both cases, it's countries have committed um, to certain targets and these protocols are extremely important um, um, instruments uh, for countries to demonstrate that they're meeting com commitments and hence generate um, more um, climate smart investments. Many things. Um, first, first of all, being it's the only project of its kind that I know of that is looking just at livestock. Um, so um, there's been a lot of buzz around climate smart agriculture over the last decade, but our experience has been that it, they, people want to focus on agriculture, and when they do that, it tends to be crop-based agriculture or, or sometimes forestry and agroforestry, but livestock are kind of always added in at the last minute. There hasn't been a project just focused on what are the, what are the needs and issues surrounding, surrounding livestock. So that, that's, its, that's its, its most unique selling point. I think the, um, a, a second unique selling point is the way we're doing this in partnership with the World Bank. Um, so the idea behind the partnership between ILRI, which is a research for development organization, and the World Bank, which finances development projects, is that um, they will use the learnings um, and the best practices that we identify um, in our project to inform their um, new climate smart investments going forward. Um, and also to help us make the case that livestock are really important to both climate change mitigation and adaptation. And I think this, the third unique selling point is the fact that we are linking on the ground practice with um, the higher level uh, enabling policy environment that's required to make sure that farmers can have some of the incentives in place that they need to for broad scale adoption of climate change um, mitigation and adaptation practices. So under the first component we'll have, we'll identify 
pilot and validate a series of interventions um, and be able to um, explain just what we think their potential is for reducing greenhouse gas emissions intensities, also explain what their potential for um, 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 enabling adaptation to climate change, so that, that'll be a set of practices. And then I think perhaps our most ambitious um, um, intended output is actually to have all the work that we do under the second component around policy development and developing and attracting climate finance would be that one or more of the countries we're working in succeeds in attracting um, a solid climate, um, uh, climate investment and also that perhaps our work around um, future adaptation requirements results in um, concrete policy outcomes or policy redesign.